I spent time in the UK, particularly England, and I spent a night at an inn called the Woolpack Inn. It's up in the Lake District. I kind of got thinking, you know, I really like pubs, and I love real ale. I'm a huge fan of the cast condition beers, obviously. The next day on the train to Yorkshire, I something snapped, and I said, I can do that. I could start a pub in my little town of Oak Ridge, and I can brew exclusively cast condition ale. And so we came back and built this place with the help of a bunch of other people. We, we put together a pub. Real ale, that terminology actually came out of the uh, campaign for real ale in, in England uh, to try to recapture their traditional way beer was made for centuries uh, in, in England. And the idea is that you use traditional ingredients, you serve the beer out of the uh, container in which it's basically conditioned or where the secondary fermentation goes on. And so the carbonation in, in a pint of real ale or cast conditioned beer is, uh, comes from residual sugars and yeast. There's really two myths, uh, or you can think of them as one. Uh, the warm flat beer myth. No, it's not warm. It's warmer than your typical American brew. It's not flat. There are, there, you can see the CO2 in there. If it were flat, I'd be embarrassed. I mean, this is, I consider this to be a lively pint. You have to be really careful with the recipes uh, for, a, for a cast beer, especially a low alcohol beer. Uh, is you can't hide anything in them. You can't hide flaws, uh, mistakes, off flavors. And that's the difference between a cask and a keg. A cask has a living beer in it. Uh, it still has yeast. It, it's evolving day to day in the pumps and in the, in the cask behind the bar. And they are traditionally served at what's called cellar temperature, which is 50 to 55 degrees. And at the, at the cellar temperature, you, you get to taste more. That's the thing, you can taste more of the, of the ingredients. It's, uh, you're not being interfered by the temperature, all those bubbles uh, impinging on your taste buds. It's, you taste grains and uh, you know, the subtleties of the hops. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna have to have a taste here, just to <laughs> go for one. Yeah. I guess the principal goal that two of them I was trying to achieve is I wanted to recreate the, uh, the authentic English public house atmosphere. Now that does not necessarily mean you gotta have Union Jacks on the ceiling and, and West Brom and Chelsea scarves all over the walls. Um, it has to have character. It's gotta be something that makes it interesting. Uh, maybe the setting that it's in or some of the things that go on in the pub like brewing real ale that we do. And it has to have atmosphere. You gotta be, it's gotta be cozy, welcoming. I think we've achieved those things here. Maybe not to the degree I want to, but we also had to mix it in with the, we're in an American setting here. This is a small former logging town. Every small town needs a pub. They're very difficult to do, but you know, when you're sitting back there and you got live music going and people are having fun and kids are running around and people are dancing, it's like, this is, this is why we do it. This is so satisfying. <laughs>